Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. Thanks for hanging in there. I know it's uh, kind of been a long day and you've been bombarded with um, information. So effectively, as Deep's alluded, we're just going to basically have another look at Interplay Central and um, effectively just dig into it a little more just to sort of gain a bit of understanding as to kind of how, we, um, how this all works. So just to basically sketch out for you what we're um, looking at here at the moment, our Interplay is sitting downstairs. And as uh, Deeps mentioned, effectively Interplay, the, the way to think about it in simple terms is effectively shared storage editing clients that have effectively have a database wrapped around them. That's effectively what Interplay brings you. And effectively that database enables uh, keyword search, organization, metadata input, all of that sort of good stuff, which then in turn becomes searchable in its own right. But further, the Interplay infrastructure enables workflows for our, for our clients that simple shared storage doesn't. So as uh, Deeps uh, alluded to earlier, shared uh, automated ingest, automated transcoding, effectively farming out these functions to other systems rather than getting them manually sort of done by humans. So I've logged into my um, <coughs> user account on um, Interplay Central, and effectively the, the, the Interplay Central, the, the, the web UI that you get, in effect could be within over a corporate WAN, it could be over a uh, it could be over a, a VPN connection with a user sitting at home, and you know we, we sort of really can't stress enough how having the uh, having the ability of sort of having clients freed from having to have a media composer um, client accessing shared storage and um, editorial metadata logging all of those sort of key functions it's a pretty big deal for for everyone really. So what we're going to do today is have a look at another component of uh, Interplay, in this case, Venice. And what we're going to use is set Venice up, and we're going to do a live capture into our Interplay, and then have a look and see if we can see that um, update in the central, and we'll play around with that a bit. So I've got a channel of Venice set up, and Venice, if you guys weren't around for this earlier, is effectively a, it's a broadcast um, server, which, al which allows... Um, capture, uh, playback, and transcoding of sort of broadcast capable material. So effectively, I'm going to kind of kick, um, I've got my sort of destination set up on Interplay, and what Venice is doing is recording straight into our ISIS um, shared storage and automatically checking this asset into Interplay um, at the same time. So I'm going to kick off the recording. Um, just let me check that I'm all good to go. I'm not sure why I'm not. Just... Sorry, I may just need to quit out of this channel and go back. Uh, uh, no, I've got. I thought I was seeing video earlier. Ah, thank you. All right, there we go. <laughs> thank you very much. I can, there's a thing with having these things sitting um, idly in the background. Okay, thanks very much. So there I am, and I'm just going to sort of hide that for the moment. And effectively, if I just refresh my, um, my window, I should basically see the, the clip that I've been capturing. I'm going into the, the, the sort of the platform one um, directory. And effectively, here you can see there's a little clip that has a half completed master clip icon. And effectively, if I just double click on that and load that in, that's the shot that we're kind of capturing in at the moment. So effectively what's underpinning this is the sort of the, the interplay um, architecture which is allowing us to basically kind of get to this material. So what I'm going to do is effectively we'll just create a, a new sequence just to sort of give you some indication that, um, uh, you know, to show you a bit more about what Central is about. Central's not just about sort of logging and, and viewing footage. You can kind of get to sort of some quite... Uh, deep functions also. So I've got a, a, a new sequence sort of made and effectively go back to our sort of live capture, load that in, and I just need to sort of give my UI a little more room here, so we've got a bit more space. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of grab this piece and we can see that it's sort of it's kind of updated, someone popped their hand up in front, so there's absolutely no sort of smoke and mirrors or, or artifice here. And I'm going to basically just now drag and drop. And the, 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 
the, the Avid have done a fantastic job on the UI. You can see as I move my sort of cursor down, it kind of then populates the, the, the sort of audio track, so I can put my, position my stuff in. I'm going to find another shot for the moment. Let's see what we've got here. And obviously this is kind of not, not sort of really making any, any edit, in editorial judgments here, but just to kind of give you a, a sense of sort of how the actual mechanics of uh, the, the process sort of work. And you can see as I move the sort of cursor over various, it's pretty intuitive in terms of slipping and sliding, inserting, and so forth. And I'm just going to kind of mark up another shot here. Pop that over and put that in. And now we've got, we've got four shots in our timeline, and we can kind of have a look. And you can see as I drag over my sequence area and hit play, my tab at the top of the sort of viewer switches over to output at the top. And now I'm kind of viewing the sequence that I've sort of have just sort of stitched together. So the, in terms of the timeline itself, let's pop a couple of dissolves in there. So I've, in my sort of user settings, we've sort of preset it to add 25 frame dissolves, I think. So we can just pop those in there. And there we go. And we can just roll back there and watch that sort of through again. So now effectively we're seeing sort of real time dissolves and so forth sort of put in. And this is an experience that you're kind of getting through a web browser. Um, it's in terms of, you know, over the, the, over the last couple of years, we've sort of looked quite closely at various technologies that have purported to sort of offer browser-based editing. And most of the time, they were sort of pretty, they were pretty frustrating um, experiences, quite honestly. But as you can see, the, the sort of the controls here are, are sort of pretty slick and neat. As an added bonus, there are a couple of sort of little features sort of built in which are really neat in terms of just kind of being able to manage the user experience. I can kind of dial in the quality that I'm after in terms of kilobits, so 40, 60, or 80 kilobit. I can also sort of open up and have a sort of sitting in the heads up display playback statistics. Uh, statistics. So if you're looking at any sort of, if you're trying to sort of troubleshoot any areas on the network or just kind of trying to understand what sort of performance you're kind of getting, um, you can very quickly see what's kind of going on in, in terms of your playback metrics. I'm just going to turn that off for the moment. So as, as deep as it pains to point out, what I'm actually doing, although I'm sort of editing through the web browser, I'm effectively writing metadata straight back to the Interplay database. And the sort of the tree, uh, the, 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 the lists of clips that I'm sort of seeing here, and if I kind of load in shots, here's another shot which has got a bunch of locators associated with it. And down the bottom, in the bottom left of the pane, you can see I've got my locator pane up, or markers, as we should call them now. And effectively, I can, you see as I'm dragging through, it's jumping to the markers. I double click on a marker, it takes me to that position straight away. It's very, you know, it, it's intuitive, easy, and, and incredibly elegant in terms of its kind of implementation. So the key thing to sort of really take away from this is that effectively editing and access to content in the Interplay environment has really been sort of taken a huge leap forward with Central. Um, and as Deeps was saying earlier, it'll be available on the iPad um, in July or June, July timeframe, which is gonna be great in terms of just allowing producers to consume material. Um, and really sort of finally, it just allows us to kind of take the access to this material into the thin client realm and it just makes it easier and more affordable and a lot more convenient for everyone. So that pretty much summarizes our demo, I think. Thanks very much. Thank you.